Welcome to Open Source Spotlight. We invite open source authors and ask them to show the tools they are working on. Today we have Mark. Hi, Mark. Tell us a few words about yourself and about the tool you want to show us. Sure. Thank you so much, Alexei, for having me. Um, so I'm going to present you Airflow, uh, which is a. What is Airflow? <laughs> Nobody knows what it is, right? <laughs> yeah, what is what is Airflow? That's a good question. So Airflow is is really like the the most popular data orchestrator, uh, to uh, programmatically author, monitor, and 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 run your data pipelines. So that's really the the goal of Airflow. It's strange that we have you only now, even though this open source spotlight exists, uh, has been around for quite some time. It should have been one of the first tools, but finally yeah. we're fixing this. So finally we have a demo of Airflow in our channel. It's never too late. Yeah. <laughs> it's never too late. Um, okay, so let me let me present you like Airflow. And basically in this presentation, I want to show you just uh, uh, what is Airflow now, because you know there is a big change between Airflow 2.0 and before Airflow 2.0. Uh, it's really like two, two different worlds. So I want to give you a, a quick overview of the most important features. We are going to build a data, pipelines to, a data pipeline together. And also we are going to set up and run Airflow locally. So if you are okay with that, Alexei, let's... I am pretty excited because last time I tried uh, running Airflow locally, my computer was not happy about that. So let's see how it goes. <laughs> Okay, let's make it up here then. Um, so let me show let me show you let me show you the the way of uh, to run Airflow on your machine. Really, you know, like there are many ways of doing it. You can use Docker, you can use Docker Compose, you can even install Airflow by yourself if you want with the pip install and so on. But what I do recommend you is to use the Astro CLI. And I want to tell you the Astro CLI is an open source project. You don't have to be an Astronomer customer, but truly, it's the easiest way to run. Airflow locally. So let me show you this. You will, if you want to install it, you can install it just by following the instructions here. But as soon as you have the Astro CLI on your computer, you just need to run one command, which is Astro dev init. And with that command, you get some files and folders, as you can see on the left. You have the folder DAGs. This is where you put your data pipelines. So the Python files corresponding to your data pipelines. You have the folder include where you put some functions, things that you want to call in your data pipelines, but that but are not data pipelines. And you have the plugins. You can customize Airflow as much as you want. If you want to change, to change the view or so on, you can do that. Have the folder tests to test your DAGs. You should test your DAGs, your data pipelines. Then you Will have you show the... us how to do this. Uh, I I won't maybe show next you, time, right? but 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 maybe next time. But you have a test if you want. Uh, okay. You can you have, you actually have a test example, so you can run it with the uh, Astro CLI. Um, then just below you have the M file, which is nice if you want to export environment variables in your Airflow instance. Then you have the Airflow settings. You know, locally, we do a lot of experiments and creating connections and variables each time you shut down your Airflow instance. This is not cool. So you can just create your connections here and your variables as well, and they will persist. Then you have the Docker file. So keep in mind that the Astro CLI is nothing more than a you know, wrapper around Docker. So you have a Docker file. You can change the Docker image here if you want to. And package.txt if you want to install like wget, some operate, uh, operating system dependencies. Then last but not least, the requirements.txt file to install the Python libraries. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is to install some uh, Python libraries that we will use later. I'm going to show you. But to do that, you just need to copy and paste some libraries. In this case, we will use PyDentic and Request. Then you save the file and you will install those Python libraries automatically. So how do you run Airflow locally with the Astro CLI? By executing one simple command, which is Astro dev start. And as you can see, this downloads the Docker image and creates the Docker containers that you need to run Airflow. You have the Postgres database, you have the scheduler, the trigger, and the web server, which are really the components that Airflow needs to run. And now if we wait just a few seconds, we should see Airflow running on my machine. So let's wait uh, just uh, maybe one or two more seconds. And <laughs> I love this time. <laughs> and here we go. So if we go to the local host colon 8080, you can see that we land on this page. And if you type admin, admin, you land on the beautiful user interface of Airflow. And again, if you are not on Airflow 2.0, this is not what you will see. You will see another uh, user interface. So that's why I strongly recommend you to at least use Airflow 2.0. So quickly, this view gives you the list of your data pipelines. If you click on one of them, 
you can see your data pipeline in a graph view. So this is really nice to see like the dependencies between your tasks. You have the grid view if you want to get the history of the states of your tasks and diagrams. You have like the code view if you want to check the code. There are many things that you can do in Airflow, but I will focus only on uh, the data pipeline creation for today. So let's do that. Now we have Airflow up and running with just two commands, Astro Dev init and Astro Dev start. We can create a new variable. So let's go to admin and variables. So what is a variable? Basically, let's say you want to build a data pipeline that fetches data from an API. You can create a variable for that so that if the API changes, you don't have to change the code and push your DAG again and go through the entire CI/CD pipeline process and so on. So it's you have more flexibility. So let's create this variable. We can call it BTC um, API, for example. And I'm just gonna copy and paste this API that you have right there, like that. And you click on save and you have your new variable. This API corresponds to the current price of the Bitcoin in USD, GBP, and Euro. I'm not a fan of, of, of like, uh, you know, uh, cryptocurrencies, but this is just for the example. <laughs> Um, so once we have this API, the next step is to <laughs> the next step is to create the data pipeline. So let me show you that. You go to your code editor and in the folder DAGs, you create a new file. Let's call it btc underscore extract.py. Once you have that, you need to make some imports. So let's say from Airflow, decorators, import DAG and task. Those two imports allows you to define a DAG and define your tasks. Okay, so as soon as we have that, we can just create a DAG by using the DAG decorator, so DAG. Then you need to define a start date, which is the date at which your DAG starts being scheduled. And for that, you need to pass a daytime object. So let me just move away uh, the Zoom thing. And here you put like, let's say the 1st of January, 2023. So let's define the daytime object as well like that. And you can pass a schedule interval. So before Airflow 2.4, I think you had to use schedule interval. Now it's scheduled because you can use a cron expression, a time delta object, a timetable, and even data sets that we will see later. So for now, let's say I want to run this deck manually. I can put none here. And finally, the catch up parameter to false. Catch up. The good thing with Airflow is that if you have some, you know, DAG runs that uh, haven't been triggered for the past three days, they will be automatically triggered for you. And you can disable that with the catch up parameter. Now I define the DAG, so BTC underscore extract, just below as a function. And here I will put the tasks that I want. So uh, we're going to create the task just later. And finally, I call the DAG here as well. And that's it. So this is only what you need to create a DAG in Airflow. But now what about the tasks? Well, the first task that we want to create is extract data from API in order to get the data from the API that you can see, oops, right there. Okay, so that's the goal. To create a task, you can use the task decorator. Behind the scene, it's the Python operator. And if you are wondering what is an operator and so on, just Think of an operator as a function to interact with a tool, a service, or whatever you want. Okay, so for example, you want to interact with uh, Postgre, you have the Postgre operator. You want to interact with uh, Python, you have the Python operator. In this case, with the task decorator, we use the Python operator, and so we are going to execute Python code. So let's create this task, extract the data from API, and we import the requests library that we installed earlier. Then we just want to get the data from the API. So for that, it's really just Python here. Then we can call variable.get in order to get back the, your, the API URL that we defined from the Airflow UI. Now, as we use variable here, we need to import it as well. So we can just type from Airflow.models and we import variable and then we return response.json, okay? And you have created- I'm wondering your uh, why do you need to, Im to make imports inside the task? Is it the requirement or like, is it uh, a convention or you can that, also that, place the import outside like where you typically use put imports? 
Yeah, that's a good question. So I, I import requests here because I only use requests in that task. If mm. I use requests in different tasks, then I could definitely make the import here at the top level. But as I just use requests inside this uh, task, I prefer to uh, import it mm. here. And I can give you an example if you I can give you an example if you use numpy for example if you import mm -hmm. numpy uh it takes time to import numpy in your right. uh, in your bag right. so that's why it's much better to import it in the task where you use numpy in order mm. to uh, avoid slowing on slowing slowing down the parsing of your DAG. So then it will be imported only when the task is executed and if you have Correct. multiple executors right so it will be only imported on the executor or Exactly. Whatever uh, the way it works. Yeah, I think you have uh, a typo in requests. Uh, no, it's just. Uh, I think. Uh, no, I, I think it's just because. Oh yeah, sorry, I didn't see that. Thank you so much. Okay, so now we have the, the first task. Let's move to the second one, which is okay. We are able to uh, extract the data from the API. Actually, let me show you that. So, if we want to just try this task, we need to call it. Okay, so we call the task. And then as we use the Astro CLI, we can type Astro dev bash in order to enter in one of the containers where Airflow is running. And now we can just type super Airflow convenient. task test. Say that again? It's super convenient. I can yeah, remember having to do these things uh, without the CLI and it was much more problematic. Yeah, this is, this, <laughs> this is really useful. So here you just need to specify the DAG ID where the task you want to try is you want to test is and then the task id of the task you want to test and finally an execution date so let's say uh, let's say this date okay if you hit enter you can verify if your task works or not and you can see that this task returns the json data that we fetch from the api nice all right so now we have the first task it's time to verify the data and for that we can create a new task so let's call it check data that takes some data, actually the uh, data returned by this task. Okay, so what you can see just below. And we want to use PyDentic in order to verify the data. So it's very simple. We are going to create a class. And if the data doesn't match with that class, then you will get, you will, that will raise uh, an exception. Okay, so let's do that. Let's create this model, this class, sorry. So in the folder include, create a new file. We can call it coin desk um, model, okay, dot py. And then we make the following import. So typing import, uh, let's say dict. Then we import pydentic as well as we need it. Again, we install it in the um, requirements file and we import a base model. Then we create the class. So class coin desk model like that and we pass the base model oops not base exception but base model now we want to define the time so just a few attributes time the type is dict str str so two strings then same thing for disclaimer if you look at the json below it's exactly what we have so disclaimer then again it's a string here and finally bpi which is a dict with a string and another dict with two string. Okay, and that's it. So this is exactly what we have below uh, and what we receive from the API. Now we have the model, we can go back to the data pipeline, import this model with from include dot condesk model and we import the class, so coindesk model. And we can just call it here, coindesk model, and pass the data, oops, like that. And we pass the data, okay? And now we've done that. If the data doesn't correspond to uh, the model, then we will receive an exception, okay? So now we are able to check the data. The last step is to store the data. And for that, again, we create a new task. It's very simple, right? Like we just need to use the task decorator each time we want to create a task and then it's just Python code. So let's create a new task, store, that takes data in par as a parameter. And we open something. I'm going to tell you what in a second. Um, then W, a file descriptor, like that. And we want to create a JSON file 
that with the file descriptor. Okay, and we need to import the JSON library as well. Okay, so now we have that. What should we put here? That's a good question. So we are not going to put like a file name or, you know, no, 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 no. We are not going to do that. Instead, we are going to define a data set. And this is a brand new feature since Airflow 2.4. So think of a data set as a representation of a piece of data. And the good thing with data sets is that, let's say you want to trigger a DAG as soon as a table or a file is updated, then you can do that with data sets. Okay. We are going to say that this task modifies, updates a data set. And as soon as this task updates the data set, that triggers another DAG, another data pipeline. So let me show you how to do it. Let's create a new file in the folder include. We can call it datasets.py. And then we import the data set. So from Airflow import data sets. And here we define the data set. So we can call it data set um, underscore BTC equals to the data set. And we have to pass a URI. In this case, the path to the file. So slash TMP slash uh, BTC underscore data dot JSON. Okay, and you have created a data set. Once you have this data set, you can go back to your BTC extract DAG import the data set. So from include dot data set, import um, data set BTC. And we can use it here, data set BTC URI. And last but not least, how do we indicate to Airflow that this task updates the data set? Well, you can define the following parameter, outlets equals to a list of data sets and you pass your data set. And that's it. The last piece is to define the dependencies. So as you can see, extract data from API returns data. Then check data gets that data returned by extract data from API. So we can just call check data and pass extract data from API as a parameter of check, da of check data. And last but not least, we want to pass check data as a parameter of store. And that's it. If we save the file, and hopefully, because this is a live demo, <laughs> and hopefully go to the Airflow UI and refresh the page, you can see BTC extract. And if we go to the graph, you have a beautiful data pipeline that use decorators and data sets in order to uh, trigger another DAG. Now I want to show you this other DAG. And this time I'm not gonna code it in live. Instead, I'm just going to create a new file so let's call it BTC. We can call it like BTC underscore process.py. And let me just copy and paste this data pipeline and give you a few explanations about it. So this is very simple again. We define the DAG with the DAG decorator. We define the new DAG, BTC process. Okay. And we create a new task, extract currency. We get back the file, the JSON file that we've, you know, created earlier in BTC extract for, from this task. And if you carefully take a look at the schedule parameter, this time we pass data set underscore BTC. What does that mean? It means as soon as the store task updates the data set, that triggers BTC process. Okay. Then just below we have a task group in order to group tasks together, if you still use sub DAGs, you should stop doing that and use task groups instead. We define the task group with the name processing BTC that takes a parameter. And below we create like two tasks, extract rate and print rate. We can define the dependencies in the task group between, the ta between those tasks as shown here. Then last but not least, you can see processing BTC, we use expand. So what does that mean? It means that since Airflow 2.4, I think, or even before, maybe 2.3, you have dynamic task mapping. So let's imagine that the API returns USD, GBP, Euro on Monday, then you will get three task groups. But let's say on Tuesday, you have USD, GBP, Euro, and GPY, then you will get four task groups. So this is evaluated at runtime. And this is very useful if you have a bunch of files, but you don't know what they will be, 
this is really the way to 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 do it. You can just execute as many, you can just create as many tasks as you want, and you don't need to know in advance what uh, the number of files is. So let's go back to the Airflow UI. As you can see, we have a new DAG BTC process. You can see the schedule interval is data set and you can see on what. So this is the data set we defined earlier. If you go to the data sets view, you can see this dependency as well. So BTC extract updates the following data set that triggers BTC process. And now if you go back to the DAGs and run the DAG. So let's wait a little bit and let me unpause uh, BTC process. As we use the schedule interval known, we need to trigger it manually. So let's trigger the DAG. And now it's time to see if it works. So let's see. And as you can see, BTC process has been triggered. And now it's done. So if I go to BTC process, look at the graph, you have your task group. Three task groups has been created, as you can see between the square brackets. If I click on print rate, then go to one of the task groups, let's say the last one, and go to the log, I can see the euro rate. And that's, that's cool. how you create data pipelines using decorators, data sets, uh, dynamic task mapping, and you have truly the most powerful features of Airflow in just, uh, I, I don't know, like maybe like 20 minutes, something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm really curious about this data set feature. What yeah. could be a data set? So a file, obviously we saw an example right now. Can it be um, like an object in S3? Yeah, that's a good question. So a data set can be absolutely anything you want right now. Because it's like database, just think of right? it. Yeah, just think of a data set as uh, a string. That's it. Mm -hmm. Airflow doesn't actually check the data behind the data set. It's not yeah. just a string. And you said to Airflow with the outlets parameter that this task updates the following data set. But Airflow mm -hmm. is truly not checking if the data has been updated or not. Okay. It's just right. So it just knows data. that uh, like this data set was touched in a different DAG. So once Correct. this DAG finishes, Correct. it knows that there, are, uh, there is a bunch of dependencies that need to be executed after this DAG finishes because it Correct. touched this particular data set. Correct. I see now. So then it can be any right. string. It doesn't matter what exactly. Like it can be S3, it can be database connection, it can be, I don't know, just a random string. Whatever you want. I see. <laughs> Whatever you want. But the good thing is you have this representation now. Okay, you can clearly see, you know, like that this DAG updates this data and then that triggers this uh, data pipeline. And, and you can have like multiple data sets. You know, you can have a DAG waiting for many data sets at the same time. So this is this is pretty awesome. It is, yeah. Uh, how many people are working on Airflow? I know it's a huge, huge project, but uh, do, you, do you even have a number? Wow, I I don't even have a number, truly. It's uh, like there, it's there are so many... Project, right? Yeah, it's an Apache project and there are like so many people working on it. Um, you know, I'm working at Astronomer, so we have PNC, PMC members working uh, on Airflow as well at Astronomer. Uh, and there is a huge community behind Airflow. Uh, that's that's why it is so popular. Hmm. Do you know what is on the roadmap for Airflow? Um, I can tell you that, for example, this is this is truly an exclusivity. But <laughs> I can I can tell you that the grid view, for example, is going to change. Uh, you will be able to see your data sets from there. Uh, maybe the graph view as well. Um, the data sets are going to be improved a lot, right? Like we are still at the first version of data sets, uh, but we can do much more than that. Um, yeah, so that's that's a bunch of uh, of features that will uh, that will come very soon. When you run Airflow, I saw that um, you need Postgres, you need uh, I don't know Celery or like a bunch of things. I don't remember if Celery was there. I remember that when I needed to run it, it was there. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of not the most lightweight thing. Is there a way to run Airflow in a more lightweight mode? That's exactly what we did, right? Like with the Astro CLI behind the scene, is it's mm -hmm. really like just the scheduler, the web server, Postgre, mm -hmm. uh, and the trigger running. Okay, okay. it's not so like it's a already lightweight. Right? 
it can be lightweight. That's the thing with mm -hmm. airflow. If you want to use celery, obviously, yes, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's easier. But you don't have to do it. You can use Kubernetes if you want. You can use Celery if you want. But you can also just use the local executor, which is exactly what we did. And we run everything on a single machine. And just with mm -hmm. like, what, like two commands, everything mm -hmm. runs. You, I would say, I would say, you know, before before going with like Celery and so on, just try with the local executor. If that enough, is that is enough with your workload? And then if you need, you know, to scale up and so on, look at other solutions like uh, like Celery or Kubernetes. If you run Airflow in production, you will have to use either Celery or, or Kubernetes mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess at Astronomer, you have some sort of cloud solution too, right? Yeah, that's the good thing with uh, Astronomer. So let's say you you don't want to you know care about the details and all, the, all of the things and just focus on creating data pipelines. Obviously, Astronomer is the way to go. You have a managed version of Airflow and you have more than that, actually. You can even uh, create your data pipelines using, uh, you know, kind of like a Jupyter notebook. Uh, we call that the cloud IDE, which is really nice. Uh, we have a bunch of additional features that makes the difference, especially when you run Airflow in production. So yeah, yeah. yeah. take a look at us tomorrow, that's for sure. <laughs> yes, do take a look. And um, if somebody wants to contribute to Airflow, how should they mm -hmm. go about that? Uh, they should definitely go to the repository of Airflow. Uh, I think there is, I think there is a contributing uh, file that you will that you will see in the repo. Um, let me let me quickly check. Uh, and you have like all the instructions that you need truly. Uh, if you scroll down a little, I remember that, yeah, contributing. So just click on this file, contributing, and you have like all the instructions you need to contribute to the uh, Apache Airflow project. Mm -hmm. Are there any good first issues? Uh, I'm sure there are some well, I know issues. There are quite a few issues, as I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, that's that's the thing with an active project, right? Like you yeah, always okay. have a lot of issues because people use it a lot. Uh, but yeah, feel free to go through uh, some issues. And uh, if you feel uh, that you can solve one of those, I mean, we would be more than happy about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, well, amazing demo. Last question. Do you yeah. have any advice to anyone who is watching this? Yep. Yeah. Um, I would say, don't follow the hype, just try, you know, try the tool. Uh, and it's not just about Airflow, just try the tool that you think is great for your use case uh, and then make your own opinion. That's really what I would say. That's my advice, especially as data engineers. <laughs> Concise and to the point. Thanks a lot. Right. Great demo. Pleasure having you here. Um, so today I learned about this Astra CLA, amazing tool. Um, Next time I run Airflow, I know how I will do this. Yep. <laughs> Try it, Alexei. You will be happy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks.